Good morning. From a very rainy Venice today, we stayed at the Amber Hostel last night, and it's about a two minute walk away from the train station, so very, very convenient. We couldn't take any footage because we stayed in a nine bed dorm and we just wanted to be respectful to the other people that were in there. But what we can tell you is that it's very clean and modern and looks more like an actual hotel from the outside. It's actually one of the top rated hostels in the whole of Venice and you can definitely see why. Everything from check-in to breakfast and everything in between has been exceptionally smooth and it seems to have pretty much every single possible facility you can shake a stick at. So if you are going to stay in Venice and you're happy to be on the mainland rather than the islands, then this is a good place to come. However, because of the fact that we are on the mainland right by the Mestre train station, then this does mean that we're going to need to take a quick train into the main city, which is obviously a bunch of islands. So with that, we're going to make a start on that and go from there. This is the Chiesa San Giacomo di Rialto, which apparently is the oldest church in the city, having been initially constructed in 421 AD. We are now at the Rialto Bridge, and this is the oldest bridge that goes across the Grand Canal in the city. Some meandering through the many quiet and narrow streets of Venice, we've arrived at St. Mark's Square. We found a free walking tour that's accompanied by an audio guide, and it's by tours by foot. Tours by foot. So that's what we're going to listen to, and we will link it in the description box below. So the very ornate umbrellas and seating area is for a cafe called Florian, which was established in 1720 and is the oldest cafe not just in Venice but in the entire world. Apparently the hot chocolate was a status symbol back in the day, but it is hellishly expensive so we may have to skip this one. Next time though. Sitting atop the column on the left is St. Mark and on top of the one on the right is St. Theodore and a lot of people don't know that it's actually bad luck to walk between the two columns because this is the site where they used to stage executions. Behind me is the 
Doge's palace that has nothing to do with the very popular meme that's been circulating over the past few years. Back in medieval times and beyond, up until it was unified as a republic, Italy was divided into a number of city-states, and we kind of alluded to that when we went to Florence and Pisa. So Venice was its own separate kingdom, and it was run by the Doge. And this building was the building that they used in order to basically run the entire kingdom. This is the Bridge of Sighs and it connects Doja's palace to the prison. You can recognize that it was a prison because there's bars on the window here. And this bridge is often the last place where prisoners would look out and sigh on their way to being executed. We went to St. Mark's Square, which was beautiful, and we were interested in going in the Doge's Palace, but we then found out that it was 31 euros per ticket. Say what? So decided, probably best not to. Instead, we did some research and we found that this beautiful church is called Santa Maria della Sedute, and it has free admission. So we walked over here and we're about to head in. interesting. Apparently this place was built after a plague swept through Venice and ended up decimating the population pretty heavily. So this was an intended as kind of being able to create a symbol of hope for the people by the Doge at the time. This church is really different to everything else we've seen because number one it's much smaller but also the shape of it it's round and all the churches that we've seen are in the shape of a cross. So I found that really interesting. And then there is lots of little chapels around the outside of it. The other thing is that it's a shame that you can't see the exterior because the two blue domes are iconic. And they're doing a lot of repairs right now, so obviously they're scaffolding. But definitely come here and get the audio guide because it really gives you a deeper appreciation for the place. It will be a short visit, but it's free. Including the audio guide. And it was nice. After a short bite to eat, we're going to stand in this line to try and get into the Cathedral of St. Mark. And I think it's three euros each. It's 3.13 right now, so let's see what time we get in. 3.45 and we're heading in. Half an hour is not too bad.
we've just gone inside St. Mark's Basilica. After doing a little bit of research, it turns out that this church was initially started in the 9th century, which means that this is over a thousand years old. It has all sorts of different art styles because works were added, completed, renovated over the lifespan of this church. But a lot of what we see, especially with the four horses at the top of the entryway here, were actually stolen. So they were taken from the Fourth Crusade, which was in Constantinople, now Istanbul. And so as a result, there are a lot of Byzantine influences of the era that are still in the church today. This is my absolute favorite church that we have seen in all of Italy. Nick astutely pointed out that unlike the other churches where there's decorations on the wall, these walls are empty and everything is on the ceiling and the ceilings are outrageously gorgeous. They are completely done in gold leaf and have religious paintings on them. I have never seen anything like it and I could not stop staring. I didn't want to leave because the ceiling was so mesmerizing and sparkly. Honestly, everything in there is so ornate and done so well and there is so much detail that genuinely I had no idea where to look. But I couldn't take all of it in at all. There was just so much to see and it almost makes me feel like you could probably spend the best part of half a day in there just taking everything in because it's stunning. Probably the best church that either of us have seen so far. I don't know if I said this already, but the three euros was 100% worth it. We have come to Alaska Gelateria because we read an article that said it has the best gelato in Venice and that same article did not lead us astray in Capri so let's go taste it. The article recommended the rose flavor, the hazelnut and pistachio. Uh, the rose seemed a little bit too obscure for us, so we went with one scoop of pistachio and one of hazelnut. So here we go. That is so good. Oh my god. Make sure you're in for a treat eating this. Amazing choices. I'm a big fan of pistachio ice cream. That's probably one of the best, best I've ever had, hands down. Now the question is, which one do you like better? Yes. The flavors are so distinct, and it's the little pieces of nut in here that just do it for me. So we are now back at the hostel, having seen all of the sights and sounds of Venice that we wanted to and could afford. Mm -hmm. But that was... Amazing. It exceeded my expectations. I knew it was going to be very unique. I didn't quite know just how much. And yeah, I think everything we saw was just all very beautifully put together. I think there were a couple of other things that I wasn't quite expecting. Um, there was signposting pretty much everywhere, like down most kind of major little corners of the streets. There was always something that was pointing you either to Rialto or to Piazza San Marco which is great because obviously as a tourist those are the two main bits you really want to go to and then for everything else then you get pretty well directed also back to the trains which is great but i think aside from that just literally walking through the streets then my understanding from what i've been reading while i've been in italy is that venice was really kind of like a proper arts and culture hub it was really where a lot of creatives went in order to produce their best work and so it's really interesting because you then get to see that tradition being continued like with every sort of little nook and cranny there's some sort of artisan shop of some kind even if that's for food then that's one thing but then you have glassware you then have clothing you then have art and all of that kind of stuff and literally just around every corner um, it seems that that sort of artisan culture has lived on, which is beautiful. 
I was just happy that the weather got better because the day is always better when it's sunny. I can't believe Italy has come to an end. We are leaving tonight. We're taking Flix bus to Slovenia. So that'll be up next. Yeah, can't quite believe it. It's been quite a whistle stop tour in itself. So it's, um, it's probably going to hit me as to kind of what we've done and all the places that we've been to probably a little bit later down the line when we get a minute to catch our breath. But yeah, amazing country. Loved it and really excited for checking out Slovenia, which I know by admission very little about. And now I get to go to a new country. Until next time though, take care. And keep smiling.